So I haven't done one of these in a while. I figured it was time to do a new best of video. For this one, we're gonna talk about the best Wi-Fi 7 routers that you can currently buy and why you would want to. Firstly, if you're not familiar, Wi-Fi 7 has all of the features from Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 6 and is backwards compatible with all of the previous versions of Wi-Fi. But if the router and the device on the network also support Wi-Fi 7, then they can benefit from all of the pretty impressive features that Wi-Fi 7 brings, like double the streams, so more devices can communicate at once. More data can be sent per packet, which increases speeds. The ultra-fast 6 gigahertz band that we got from Wi-Fi 6E is here, and it can support channels twice as large, so that can be even faster. And MLO, or multi-link operation, which allows the router and device to combine all the frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz, five and six gigahertz together into a single connection, along with send data down multiple connections, essentially creating much larger pipelines to send and receive with. Honestly, it's all really clever. And I did a full decoder video, the explainer series here on the channel, detailing all of the features and differences of Wi-Fi 7 that I'll link below if you're curious. But once you've decided you want a Wi-Fi 7 router, that leads us to the question of what are the best Wi-Fi 7 routers to buy? Well, I bought and tested a bunch, and here are the three best Wi-Fi 7 routers for various scenarios. First up, we have the Amazon Eero Max 7. Now, full disclosure, Eero sent me this router to use for this video. But I will say, right off the bat, this is probably the best Wi-Fi 7 router for the money. You can buy a one, two, or three node mesh system based on your coverage needs, and the new Eero Max 7 doubles the coverage from the Eero Pro 6E model. And so just one node alone now covers 2,500 square feet, which is crazy. But it means that you can save money by getting less nodes, and always add nodes if you find that you need more coverage. Each one will add about 2,500 square feet of potential coverage. As for speeds, I get well over one gigabit per second download speeds all around my New York City apartment apartment, and I only need one node for that. But the crazy thing is that I was getting over two gigabit per second upload speeds, even though my internet plan is a two gigabit up and down plan. But that is particularly good for me as I upload footage a lot. So upload speeds are very important. So basically anything that you could think of that you could possibly run over the network is probably going to run just fine from 8K streaming to gaming to AR, VR applications, etc. But it can also just reduce congestion on the network automatically for much more normal daily tasks. And it even does so with a ton of devices on the network. And it does this not just with the inherent benefits that are part of Wi-Fi 7 to help with this, but also a true mesh technology, they call it, that helps dynamically find the best path for data transfer to and from all of the devices on the network. Now, something pretty unique about the Eero Max 7 as well is the fact that it is also a smart home hub, meaning that smart devices that use IoT protocols like Matter, Zigbee, or Thread, like smart lights and locks, etc., can all use it to connect. So you don't need a separate smart hub like you normally would, which saves money and also just simplifies things. Around the back of each node, we have two 10 gigabit per second ethernet ports and two 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet ports. These are all great for things like NAS storage that can support those speeds, for example. Now, as with all the routers on this list, I will leave a link to the best price that I could find in the description below. Then we have the TP-Link Deco BE95, which is a little bit more expensive than the Eero, especially if you plan to have smart lights and other IoT devices since it doesn't have that hub built in. Similarly to the Eero, you can buy an A1, 2, or 3 node mesh system. We also have two 10 gigabit ethernet ports and two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports on the back of each of the nodes. So again, great for plugging into multi-gig internet and also NAS devices that can support over one gigabit speeds. The theoretical max wireless speed is 33 gigabits per second. So again, Again, even more headroom for anything you could possibly do on a wireless network. That again, theoretical speed, is based on the fact that it has an interesting feature that most Wi-Fi 7 models don't have, which is quad band support. So all Wi-Fi 7 routers generally have support for 2.4, 5, and the newer 6 gigahertz band, and they can all use that multi-link operation feature that I mentioned earlier to dynamically allocate traffic across all three of those bands to get higher speeds and lower latency. The BE95 though, also has an extra 6 gigahertz band, or more specifically, it can split its six gigahertz band into two. This allows it to use that new and much faster six gigahertz band with two connections simultaneously, which means potentially faster speeds when you have multiple devices capable of using those six gigahertz speeds, which is kind of clever. Lastly, this is the RS Surfboard G54. 
and it's the choice for those with a one gigabit per second or higher cable internet connection and want to just have a one box solution to replace not just the router, the thing that provides a Wi-Fi network for the location, but also the modem, the thing that connects the network in the space to the internet at large. Now, sometimes these are two separate units, but in most cases, they're combo units like this one. It has the same Wi-Fi 7 inherent benefits that we've already discussed, but it's not a mesh system. So it's only good for places that just need the one access point. But this one unit can apparently cover up to 5,000 square feet. It also has an up to 18 gigabit per second theoretical wireless speed, and it has four one gigabit per second ethernet ports and one 10 gigabit per second ethernet port. The big reason that you would get this though is the simplicity of having the one unit and not having to worry about a router plus modem and still getting all the benefits of Wi-Fi 7. To use this though, you will need to have cable internet and not say fiber optic, for example. You'll also need to contact your cable provider and make sure that they are willing to allow you to use this and help you set it up. But so long as this works with your cable provider, you can buy this and save that monthly fee as well as future-proof your situation for multi-gig speeds as your cable provider begins to roll them out. There you go though, the best Wi-Fi 7 routers that you can buy right now. The Euro 7 is again, probably the best for the money of the group, especially if you're going to use any IOT devices, thanks to that built-in hub for all of those different protocols. The TP-Link is maybe the money is no object choice. And the RS again, is if you want to eliminate the cable modem that you are probably renting from your ISP. Again, I will leave links to all of the routers mentioned in this video in the description below. Also, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And thanks for watching.